first message is that there continues to be a concern about increasing rates of antibiotic resistant organisms and this is really becoming a significant public health threat and is certainly a patient safety issue. The problem is of greatest concern in hospital settings and other healthcare facilities. Uh, this is important not only because the numbers of these cases are increasing, but also because they are quite capable of causing serious, even life-threatening infections. And this is occurring, ironically, at the exact same time that the pharmaceutical industry is developing fewer and fewer new drugs to combat these infections. And, and the concern is that we will end up in not too long from now a situation where we have infections caused by organisms that are so resistant there are no agents available to treat these infections. So antibiotic resistant organisms are uh, bacteria or germs that cause important human infections but they are resistant to the antibiotics that we would normally use to treat these infections. And what that means is it's difficult to treat them. Some common examples include MRSA, those letters stand for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and that's probably the single most common antibiotic-resistant organism in hospitals today. They include other organisms like VRE, vancomycin-resistant enterococcus. They include multidrug-resistant gram-negative bacilli, which are important hospital-acquired organisms. And they also include C. difficile or Clostridium difficile. And you may be aware that that caused an enormous outbreak in Quebec hospitals a few years ago. This virulent or aggressive strain of C. difficile is spreading across the country and we are also seeing increases in many other parts of Canada now, not just Quebec. And it's estimated that the cost of these organisms to the Canadian healthcare system is, uh, ranges anywhere from half a billion to several billions of dollars of excess cost. In, in my opinion, there has been a mixed success in terms of dealing with antibiotic resistant organisms in Canadian hospitals. You can say there's been success because our rates are by no means the highest in the world. We only have to look south of the border. The United States uh, rates of resistance are generally much higher than in Canada, so too in many European countries. On the other hand, however, we're not doing as good a job as we ought to be doing because our rates indeed are continuing to climb for many of these antibiotic resistant organisms despite our best efforts. And so I believe there are a number of uh, areas where we uh, nationally need to be doing a much better job. They include, number one, the establishment of a major national surveillance system. Surveillance basically is our ability to keep track of, to monitor antibiotic resistance rates in hospitals across the country. And the reality is we're not doing as good a job of this as we should be. So we need a better, uh, and in my opinion, a much better resourced national surveillance system. Secondly, within our own healthcare facilities, we also need to be doing a better job of interrupting or preventing spread of these resistant organisms. And the, basics, the basis for that is hand washing, hand hygiene. And we know from study after study, audit after audit, we should be doing a much better job of simple, basic infection control measures like hand hygiene in our hospitals. I guess the other critically important element in all of this uh, as part of any hospital or healthcare facility infection control measure is attention to environmental cleaning. We know that many of these antibiotic resistant organisms can survive in the hospital environment for days or even weeks at a time. And if that hospital environment is not properly cleaned, that too poses a risk to patients and potentially also to healthcare workers. Thirdly, the major driver for antibiotic resistance is how we use our antibiotics. And we also know from countless studies that there is a significant amount of what would best be described as inappropriate antibiotic use. Either a drug, an antibiotic isn't needed at all, or the wrong drug is used, the wrong dose is used, the duration may not be the right duration. All of these things have a major effect on the emergence of antibiotic resistant organisms. And I think we also need to be doing a much better job of ensuring that antibiotics are used appropriately. As a result, the Infectious Diseases Society of America, seconded also by Canadian organization, has really promoted the development of antibiotic stewardship programs in hospitals in order to guide physicians in a much better and more effective way to use antibiotics in the most effective and the most appropriate way. All of those things can only improve 
uh, the situation in our Canadian healthcare system and uh, con better control the emergence and spread of antibiotic resistance and hopefully not only control it but actually reduce these rates.